Mr. Wheat now calls House Bill 874 by Representative Kerner. It's an act to amend the Code of Criminal Procedure relative to Global Positioning Monitoring Systems. Okay, members, we're on the subject, House bills on subject to call. Senator Wheat. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, we had the bill the last week. We had a pretty large set of amendments that needed time to digest, and I think we had the opportunity to do that. Um, so here's what I'll tell you folks. Uh, last year we passed a bill, H HB 556, that uh, required us to set up a commission for creating rules for GPS tracking systems. And born out of that uh, was a lot of uh, suggestions that uh, came about uh, for us doing so. And also because of the, the situation that we have right now is just not working when it comes to dealing with um, the who's responsible for knowing where individuals are and what their uh, guidelines are if they are put out uh, into society with a ankle bracelet and who's to be monitoring, who's reporting to who. And so this uh, bill 874 gives oversight and accountability to the GPS monitoring of individuals placed under this program. And, and I, I will tell you, I think y'all would be quite surprised of the inadequacies of the program that we currently have. And so 874 will put guidelines into effect for providers of electronic, excuse me, electronic monitoring devices in place. I want to just give you a few examples of some of the failures that uh, we've had in the current system and, and why this bill is necessary. In the summer of 2020 in St. Francisville, an offender that was equipped with an ankle monitoring device was left unattended and unfortunately was able to stalk a victim for two weeks. Ultimately, he hid in her laundry closet and killed her. The provider was not able to be held, nobody was, be, was able to be held accountable for that because there was no legislation in place to say who was responsible for reporting the violation that occurred as a result of that incident. In Baton Rouge, we had a murder that occurred when the suspect was wearing an ankle monitoring device. The crime was captured through Instagram. And again, no reporting of that individual, where they were, how they, have, they violated the parameters of them being released. In St. Tammany Parish, an offender cut off his ankle bracelet. No report was filed until the bonding company was questioned uh, or question the, um, the, the, the monitoring of the offender after he missed court. And on the flip side of that, we had an offender that was presented for a, a, an acute emergency procedure. He was having a stroke. He went to the hospital. Uh, he could not have the necessary MRI because he couldn't go to the MRI machine with the electronic device on. They tried to, to locate who was responsible for the device, and it took a long, long time. Unfortunately, uh, that timing uh, was difficult for them, to, for medical providers to provide information to it. I can go on and on and on. This is repeated numerous times throughout uh, the process that we currently are in. So basically, 874 uh, moves reporting to the local level. It requires a 24-hour report of potential uh, violations. It has monthly and yearly reporting, and it puts the provider's name and contact information into the docket at the time of the court proceedings. So right then and there, you have the ability to find out who's in control of monitoring an individual if he's put out into society. There's a court document that you can go to. You can then. Uh, go back, make the necessary calls to find out who's responsible for monitoring, under what conditions, and what provision that they should be uh, done. It, it was brought up last week a little bit about the, the cost of the procedure. This is a offender pay program for adults, and so the offenders pay for this. The juveniles, it's a city and state uh, requirement that is uh, be paid for. In summary, House Bill 874 ensures that the responsibility of the providers are clear and that courts can be confident 
that the offenders are following the condition that have been set forth and that if the condition is violated, that the courts are notified promptly. Supporters of the bill, uh, the DA Association put in a green card. Uh, the Bell Bond Association is in favor. We've talked to many judges, the FBI, the U.S. Marshals, local law enforcement agents, including many sheriffs. On this commission that was, uh, that was put forth, the Louisiana Commission on Law Enforcement was in favor. The Administration of Criminal Justice was in favor. The Metropolitan Crime Commission, I just got off the phone a, few, a little bit ago with probation and paroles that were in support. In summary, this is a victim protection piece of legislation to where when we release somebody out into society, that we at least have the ability to know that they're being monitored and for them to be accounted for under those circumstances. I think we have the um, amendment that we need to Senator approve. Connick for the floor on the bill. I'm sorry, amendments. I'm sorry, we'll do amendments first. Amendments? Hold on, Senator Connick. First set of amendments by Senator Wheat. They are set number 3391, 3391. On your amendments. Basically, what these amendments do is exactly that. It sets the provider registration component uh, that is approved. Uh, you could read through the amendments, which you have plenty of time to do so. And so with that, I'd ask for favorable passage of amendments at 330, 3391. Is there any objection to the adoption of the amendment? See no objection, amendments adopted. Next amendment. Senator Wheat. Senator Wheat. These are they look to be almost the same. But they're also Okay. Okay. The next set of amendments are by Senator Connick. They are set number forty two seventy two. Forty two seventy two. Senator Connick. Thank you, Mr. President. And I want to thank Senator Wee for working on this bill. He pulled it back last week. We talked to the uh, DAs, the Department of Corrections, judges, uh, chiefs of police about it back home. And, and uh, the only thing we have to change to make a bill better is on page two. At the top, it says, whoever intentionally withholds or intentionally fails to timely report information, that means intentionally fails to do something, shall be subject to a civil fine. We're going to change that under this amendment that if someone intentionally does that, that's a crime. If someone intentionally fails to report, if some, someone intentionally uh, misleads under this legislation, that's a crime. It's imprisonment for not more than six months. Uh, and that's what the amendment does. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I see, I no, see questions. no questions on the amendment. Is there any objection to the adoption of the amendment? I see no objection. The amendment is adopted. Next amendment. No further amendments. To close on your bill. Mr. President, again, uh, we look at this as a victim protective piece of legislation, and uh, I think we've done a lot of good hard work to make sure everybody has been on board with all the questions and concerns they had, and I ask for your favorable passage. Senator Wheat was final pass of House Bill 874 when the machines are on the favor of yes, so I suppose I know my secretary open the machines. Vote your machine, members, vote your machine. Senator Harris, yes. Madam Secretary, closing 37 yeas and zero nays, and bills finally passed. Senator Wheat moves to reconsider the pass and later motion to table without objection. Senator Connick wishes to open the machine for co authors. Co authors, members, co authors. Sure. Madam Secretary, close the machine, seven co authors. Next bill. <laughs> 